Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. It took centuries for humankind to reach the skies with powered flight. But since then, a lot has changed with these machines, making them colossal and extremely powerful. The insane evolution of takeoff and landing techniques during the past decades is nothing short of amazing. Six years after the first powered flight in 1903, the Wright duo introduced the world's foremost military aircraft, the Wright Military Flyer. This two-seater was manufactured to meet the demands of the U.S. Army Signal Corps as an observation aircraft. Skids were used as the landing gear, while the aircraft was placed on a launching rail for the launch. Except for the two pusher propellers, a falling counterweight connected to the rail track pulled the aircraft along the rail. The pilot released the catch to untie the counterweight and accelerate the aircraft down the rail for takeoff. When the world's first military aircraft rolled out, a flying machine that could take off and land vertically was only found in fiction books. Igor Sikorsky, an American aircraft designer, came up with the VS-300, which is considered to be the first successful single-rotor aircraft. The Vought Sikorsky Aircraft Division manufactured the helicopter, and Sikorsky took it for a spin on September 14, 1939, for the very first time. While the first flight lasted only a few seconds, Sikorsky managed to claim the International Helicopter Endurance Record under his belt by flying the VS-300 for 1 hour, 32 minutes, and 26 seconds. With the adoption of aircraft usage in many industries, airplanes that could meet new demands were required. An airplane capable of taking off and landing on shorter runways was much needed for operating in areas with inadequate infrastructure. The Piper J-3 Cub, a light aircraft that came into service in 1938, inherited many qualities required to become an aircraft capable of short takeoff and landing, or STAL. The lightweight design, high lift wings, low stall speed, and tail dragger design were among the top contributors, making it one of the sought after aircraft of many Bush pilots. The addition of Bush wheels, slats and flaps, and vortex generators, a conventional Piper Cub could be converted to a capable S Tall variant. Unlike light aircraft, when a behemoth like the C-130 decides to cut its takeoff and landing roll to a few hundred feet, that is where things start to get exciting. Operation Credible Sport, one of the most demanding rescue missions planned by the U.S. military, sought the help of both C-130s to rescue 52 U.S. diplomats from Iran. As the plan was to airlift the hostages from a soccer field to a U.S. aircraft carrier, the C-130s should manage to land and take off from the soccer field safely. No C-130, even those fitted with jet-assisted takeoff, did not meet the stringent requirements. So the U.S. Air Force and Lockheed Martin developed the Super S Tall concept. The aircraft was equipped with 30 rocket 
Even though the improvised C-130s never flew the intended mission, the technique they used was proven to be working. The importance of STAL is seen among all ranges of airplanes, regardless of their size and mission intent. Colossal airplanes like the C-17 Globemaster III were designed to lift around half a million pounds, yet have the ability to take off and land on short runways. Unlike lightweight aircraft, Incorporating STAL capabilities into a large aircraft is no easy feat. It should be done during the design phase and continue into the manufacturing phase. High lift supercritical wings, slats, and externally blown flaps played critical roles in improving the STAL capabilities of the Globemaster. Externally blown flaps significantly impacted the takeoff and landing techniques of modern day aircraft by enhancing the ability to perform slow and steep approaches. The presence of the C-17 in the U.S. Air Force enhances its global reach and mission flexibility thanks to the STAL capabilities of the aircraft. Accessing remote locations with unimproved runways deploying troops to any corner of the world, and airlifting most of the equipment in the military to any location are made possible with the Globemaster. More importantly, the contribution made by the C-17 Globemasters to humanitarian missions and disaster relief remains indispensable. Like the C-17, the A400M, manufactured by Airbus, plays the same role as a strategic and tactical airlifter. The A400M Atlas, which lies between the C-17 Globemaster and C-130 Hercules in lifting capability, is believed to be the ideal assortment to satisfy frontline requirements. The state-of-the-art technology incorporated into the A400M production line makes the airlifter brimming with all the latest features a cargo pilot would ask for. There are various stations in the production line dedicated to each aircraft section that will come together to make the airplane. As an example, Station 700 undertakes the task of positioning the sections for fitting. The final production line, located in Seville, Spain, receives certain parts from facilities located outside the country. The Beluga undertakes the tedious task of transporting all the outsized parts to the final assembly line from the manufacturing sites. In Station 60, the nose section is mated with the fuselage. A laser tracker is used to position the two parts to make the permanent connection. To connect the two sections, the drilling and riveting are done by automated machines controlled by computers. Amidst the assembly process, 
Required tests are also carried out to ensure proper working order. Station 70 is dedicated to testing the integrated wing for fuel leakage and calibration. A fully furnished aircraft receives a fresh coat of primer at Station 500 for corrosion prevention and better sealing. Like most of the transport category aircraft, the A400M has a high wing design. These wings offer the best lift coefficient. while the Europrop TP400D6 delivers 11,000 shaft horsepower apiece, making steep angle takeoffs a possibility. Additionally, the A400M has inherited the advantages that come with turboprop engines. Propeller-driven engines operate at higher efficiencies at low speeds and offer more thrust, which is required for a steep takeoff. Furthermore, the ingress of foreign object debris into the engines is no longer a concern in turboprops. A discussion on the air cargo industry is not complete without the name Antonov. The Antonov company, headquartered in Kiev, Ukraine, is well known for its prowess in manufacturing heavy transport aircraft. The AN-124 Russian is one of the most recognized aircraft engineered by the Antonov company. The aircraft can lift cargo weighing up to 150 tons. Rassam's 24-wheeled landing gear expands the aircraft's scope of operation by allowing it to land on austere or makeshift runways. Drive-through loading and unloading are made possible by opening the rear and nose cargo doors. Self-propelled vehicles are loaded directly onto the cargo floor via either door. Usually, the aircraft is kneeled and lowered to truck bed height to ease loading and unloading operations. The overhead crane system, with a lifting capacity of around 60,000 pounds, could be used for loading and unloading directly from the aircraft floor to a truck bed. This eliminates the requirement for external equipment and expedites the loading and unloading process. The onboard winch system of the aircraft allows helicopters to be directly dragged onto the cargo floor via the door ramps. The winch system can haul a single piece of cargo weighing up to 264,000 pounds. When offloading, airmen control the movement with the tow bars attached to the helicopter's landing gears. Helicopters are firmly held in position with tie-down attachments to avoid inadvertent movements during flight. Main rotors and other protruding parts are removed prior to loading. The AN-225 Mariah, an extended version of the AN-124, was a true titan of the sky that went across the globe, heaving unimaginable cargo loads. It was capable of lifting little more than half a million pounds in one go.
Even though Antonov had initiated the production of two aircraft, only one crossed the finish line. With the destruction of this extraordinary masterpiece, we, as humans, lost our boundless capacity to reach for the skies. Aviation has grown at a brisk pace from the first flight to the modern day, where extremely heavy airplanes like the C-17, C-5, and AN-124 are lifting heavy loads. Thanks to the cutting-edge technology in aircraft manufacturing, these airplanes could land and take off on austere runways, giving them the opportunity to pinpoint the delivery. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.